What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Thermal Expansion. And today guys, we are going to be messing around with the Creature Encapsulator, which is a little bit of a niche block. It's also got a slightly funny name, but it's going to allow you to capture mobs in an area around it and put them in what I would prefer to call Thermal Expansion Pokeballs, but they're actually called Morbs, so sort of a funny name, but I'm pretty sure it stands for Mob or Monster Orb, and they're basically stored in there like Pokemon would be in a Pokeball, and you can transport them wherever you want. Uh, probably should have used them when I was transporting villagers, as people pointed out a long time ago, but we're finally going to be using them for hostile mob farming today, and uh, we're going to go over a couple of the reasons that you might want to do this over other killing methods and uh, all that good stuff, but... Because we actually have to capture a bunch of hostile mobs, uh, I needed to go and make a mob farm. And uh, I actually just finished with getting this set up, and there were some minor complications. Uh, I didn't die, thankfully, and I actually didn't end up really getting hit at all. But as you can see in there, I did have to deal with killing some guys that made their way into the room down here because I forgot to put down the glass to block their way out. And uh, you'll see some things outside that are remnants of me messing up with water and stuff, but... We now have a basement. I know it's nothing fancy to look at, but this is where we're going to do all of this mob farming. Um, because there actually is a fair bit of stuff that we are going to be using today's build for in the future. So if we come outside, you can see that this is the mob farm that I am working with. It's only three floors, and uh, I don't know if it's perfectly symmetrical. I was kind of... I, I knew how the bottom layer worked, but then I started like editing stuff as I went up. But I'm pretty sure this is Ethos design from a very long time ago. Uh, it should have in it, I want to say, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I think it's 12 spawning pads in there, probably. Can't spawn spiders, can't spawn endermen, um, and it transports things with water. And they're going to fall down, land in water, because damage does not matter at all for us. And then they're going to get carried into the base, because it's going to be a little bit easier to deal with powering all the machines if they're in the base. Uh, I am going to sleep right now before we jump into anything else. And one thing I do want to point out, again, before we jump into anything else, is that I did get the Grassoline power generation working and expanded on the Cactus Farm from last episode. So that is all functioning right now. Hopefully we'll get to see it running a little bit. And that is powering the entire base. So hopefully that's enough. Uh, and we are going to have to wire some power down here today. I don't really know how we're going to do it, but we'll find a way. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be working down here. And now we might as well get to the crafting. Also, you may be wondering why there is a bunch of stuff in my inventory. This is a lot of the stuff we're going to craft with today. For some reason, chests are kind of bugged out. I think it's Optifine. Um, and I had taken it out of the pack while I was prepping. But I don't want to record without it because I want to make sure that if I'm recording, we're getting 60 FPS at 1080p. So I'm pretty sure that is what the issue is. We can't open these chests. But they still work. There's still items in there. So don't worry. If you're having any issues with stuff like chests not opening and it's not a commonly known issue as far as i know it's optifine so just a heads up for you guys but we need to do some crafting because we aren't just going to be working with the creature encapsulator today because obviously once we get the morbs full of whatever we're capturing we got to do something with them so we are going to start out by making this and there is going to be a fair bit of crafting that we need to do today so i'm going to try and blast right through it i really don't want to take a long time uh, oh, do we already have a dispenser? Yeah, I think we already have one. What? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, this is going to be a little bit of a problem because I thought I got a dispenser for us, but apparently I did not. Okay, guys, so for you, that was just the blink of an eye, and now we are back. But unfortunately for me, because I have to get stuff out of chests, that means going off camera, pretty much getting Optifine out of the pack, relaunching it, crafting this stuff, putting Optifine back in. Honestly, I can probably run this at 60 FPS, 1080p, with no issue that Optifine, but I didn't really want to risk it and having anything jitter around. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're working with. I forgot we're still going to be getting recipes over again. Not a huge fan of having to deal with that, but whatever. Okay, so now we can make the creature encapsulator. There we go. This is obviously the main block, but now what are we going to do with the morbs, as I mentioned before? Well... We need to make some of the morbs. Honestly, that's probably one of the more important parts. Uh, you can see I'm hovering over Florb right now, which is a fluid orb. But if we go to Morb, they're empty, and uh, we're going to be making a fair bit of them. Um, we're not going to make a ton of uh, the ones we'll eventually use, which are reusable. But the regular ones, you need slag, soul sand, slime balls, and ender pearls. Nothing really crazy. Uh, so we got 48 of those, and then we should be able to craft, I believe, six of the reusable ones, which should be more than enough. And that is because 
I was not sure initially if these had a 100% chance to be given back to us after we uh, use the morbs for what we're going to be using them for today, but they actually do, so they're going to be in a never-ending cycle. And as you guys will see in a little bit, when we actually enter the encapsulator's UI, it can only store four mobs in its internal buffer. And then obviously wherever it sends them is going to be able to store like one and then one will be in transit back. So at this point, you're really only going to be able to use six of them. So I didn't really see a point in making more. So we're going to be making six reusable morbs and then I'll just save the rest if we ever need to use them for transporting villagers. Super useful, but you're definitely going to want reusable for this. You're not going to want to keep crafting these every time and it's not really that expensive to make them reusable. So we now have those and what we're going to be putting them into is going to be uh, the centrifugal separator, centrifugal separator. I don't know what you'd say because it's obviously it's centrifuge, but whatever. So we're going to be putting them into this, but we do need to add an augment to it, hence us having the hardened upgrade kit, and that is going to be the instabulation apparatus. Such long, very weird names for all the stuff we're working with today, but we're going to be making this, and that is essentially going to, instead of separating stuff into its components, it'll sort of do that with mobs in that it's separating the mob into its drops by chopping it into little bits, hence us having two diamond swords, I know, obviously, we don't want to fight stuff with diamond swords when we've got all these nice tools, but we're going to be using them to craft this. So again, we are going to make another servo, and we are going to make an invar gear, and then we are going to craft this, and this is a specialization. I'm not going to add any more augments. I'm sure there's plenty that we could add to increase the drops we get or increase the speed. I'm not really worried about that, though, so there we go. And then we need to make the separator itself, which for some reason requires a compass. And oh my gosh. Okay, so yet again, going through the same process. There's no way that there's anything else missing. I apologize for messing up twice on that front today. But honestly, I'm probably the one going through the real pain here. Um, but I think if you know we are recording future episodes and it does not get fixed very soon, or there are no suggestions on what other like otherwise could be causing it if it's not Optifine, uh, then... We're pretty much just going to remove that and hope that everything runs smoothly because this is a little bit of a pain. I wish we could just fix this on camera. Uh, I don't really know why that would be an issue all of a sudden, um, but it is. So that's always fun. And I think we're on our last piece here, the most fun one, which is going to be finishing up the machine frame itself. So there we go. And there we go. So it's actually not going to require a ton of stuff for us to make. We're going to have the two machines the morbs that we're going to be working with. You could have a couple more, and then we are going to need a couple, uh, whether they're flux ducts, item ducts, I'd prefer the signalum plated item ducts, and other than that, you're pretty much set. So um, we also have the option, and I think I have the stuff on me to make it right now, to make a portable tank. So we're going to make another redstone servo. Pretty cheap to work with, but that is because of the one main perk that I see, really, for us working with this form of automated killing. Obviously, if you wanted the drops, you could drop them on the ground and have the mobs die and just pick them up with a hopper, store them, or, you know, if you're playing with another mod pack, you could use a ton of other things to kill them. But one of the perks of this is that you are going to be getting, uh, at least in Thermal Expansion, what is called Essence of Knowledge. And there's a ton of things that we can use this for, whether it's making things that are normally a pain in the butt to get. Um, this Blizz Powder is super nice uh, to work with when you really only need to farm snowballs. The ability to fill up the Tome of Knowledge, using it for all these different things. Uh, and so we're going to use that, and you're going to acquire this every time you process something through. I think you might get 100 millibuckets. It depends on what you're killing, um, but I think pre you probably average like 50 to 100 millibuckets. So we're going to have the portable tanks external storage for that, and eventually, probably next episode, we'll actually use it for something and pump it directly into that. But you're probably going to want to have that, and then uh, we are going to eventually want to have a chest, which I, I didn't really feel like putting up on camera just because there's not a point. Um, but you're not going to be able to store all the drops you're getting because these are random mobs. So unless you want a wall and you could do this with caches that store every different mob drop you could possibly get from your spawner, which probably eventually is what we should do. You could just put them into a chest initially and filter out the reusable morbs and, uh, that would be no issue. So just a couple thoughts that I had, but we're going to head downstairs now and hopefully take care of some of these guys because they're becoming a little bit annoying and they also are going to get very backed up because since we're not dropping them down they're not really stacking very well um but we should be able to put these right outside honestly so i think a big portion of it is going to come down to where we are going to get our power from and okay so we're not going to get it right from there 
maybe we can pull it from here then. Let's let's take a look up here at what we're working with. Uh, so we should be able to use these hardened flux ducts and pull it right down the front of this aqueous accumulator if we wanted to. Uh, is there any better way to pull it down here? Because this looks kind of gross. There's obviously, there's water on both of these sides, which is the unfortunate part. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any better way to pull it down here, honestly. I think we're going to pull it down like this, and then we can just put covers on it. That'll be the solution. So we'll pull it down like that, and then we'll put these up against the wall here. And we'll do the centrifugal separator and the creature encapsulator right out here. So we'll do it like, um, no, you know what, let's wrench this out and let's flip them. So let's do it like that, and then let's put this one in over here. Now, this one is a, I don't know if I've already said it, it's a 9 by 7 by 9 area. So very large area that it can pick stuff up in. Uh, not super worried about that. And we can throw our morbs in there. And then you have the option to change it from capture all. Oh, it's already starting. Yep, so you can see. So it starts capturing. It does not require any power. Really great, really great. Um, but... Uh, so you can switch it from capture all to capture hostile only or passive only. So we're going to do capture hostile only. It doesn't really matter if we capture passive guys, but I prefer it focusing on getting rid of all of these guys in here because there's going to be a fair bit eventually once I light up the caves and add more floors and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so now they're in here and we need to configure the sides. So we want it to be uh, dumping in. Actually, do we even need these in the back now that I think about it? We want it to dump directly in the orange ones on this side. So we want that. Uh, can we have orange and blue? We can. Huh. Interesting. Let me see how this would work then. Because this is not how I initially set it up. So then we have blue on that side. Which should be getting an input. And it's not going to get anything yet. But if we do blue and red, is that possible? Or blue and orange? Yeah, that should actually work. Huh. Okay, so what we need to do now, and uh, I feel like we're a little low on light here because oh, I don't want them there. We're a little low on light because we got to put that back down, and this is going to bother me so much. But regardless, I'm going to fill in the ceiling too. Little things, little things. Uh, we are going to be taking the augment and the upgrade kit, and we're going to be slapping it on here. So now, I believe this should start getting them. Yeah, so now it has the ability to actually process the mobs. Not the fastest thing ever, but you can see that it is going to process them. We're going to get some essence of knowledge. We get the drop, and then we have a reusable morb skeleton in there. And is it not? Okay, so this is the only possible problem that we could have here. So the reusable morb went back in here, but the gunpowder did not. So, it seems like the internal storage here does not want to deal with anything else. So, I think what we're going to have to do is possibly go outside and, like, chop down a tree or something. Um, I know. I, I just don't feel like going off camera. Trust me, I know. Uh, but we're going to go. We're going to chop down a tree and we're going to make a chest. And I don't know if we can possibly solve this issue perfectly right now because I think we're going to need a filter then if we're going to put these in a chest. Um, and not put them into a bunch of different cash on the wall. But I think we're going to need a chest then to allow it to store everything. Because I guess it can't process if... That's super weird that it wouldn't process just with the gunpowder in there. But clearly that's the issue. So if you're farming one mob, you're not really going to run into that problem. But because we have a bunch, that is an issue. Uh, so it'll process the skeleton. And you can see we got 200 of the essence. So it'll just keep going. And I don't know if there's a way to separate, because the morb is, I think, technically going in here. Like, if we turn this off, let's see where the morb goes. Yeah, so the morb is technically what has been processed. So the problem is, if we set it to output somewhere, like if we put it to output on one of these sides with, like, orange, uh, it's, go it's not going to work properly. So, a little bit unfortunate, but, yeah, we should be able to take care of that issue. So the one last thing that I want to do is throw down the portable tank right next to this to store it now. So we are going to set this to yellow. And it actually looks pretty cool. It's like a very, uh, I guess, like transparent greenish color. Um, so that'll fill that up a fair bit. And then really all you have to do, and I'm not going to do this right now because of the stupid Optifine chest bug. But what you would do is 
you would actually you'd send this so this will be sending over like so you'll be putting orange out that side and you'll be taking blue in the back and that is when you will use these item ducks in the back and you're going to put a chest down somewhere so you can put the chest down like right up here as long as there's not a block on top of it and you would put a filter on the chest saying that you want to uh blacklist morbs and the reason that you do that is because the chest can take in morbs empty reusable ones but this is never going to think it could take in any of your mob drops so you don't need to worry about those getting redirected there so uh that is your option to work with and obviously if i really wanted to i could just stand over here and pull things out but I'm not really going to do that right now so yeah we'll send out red out the back then and it should Blue is going in here. Red is going out the back. Yeah, so that goes out the back. That gets pulled in over there. It'll suck those up. And I would just have to stand here manually pulling these out until I filter it. I apologize that we're not going to be doing that on camera. But hopefully you guys have a pretty good idea of how to work with this. Ooh, we got some iron to go with. Um, if you do look, I believe, if we look at the recipes, you should be able to see uh, over here what the odds are of everything. So... Decent chances if you want to look at them, you know, we just got a 2% chance, pretty lucky. Uh, thank God we didn't get a potato. But yeah, so you can look at the recipes if you want to see and you're wondering about farming things. And feel free to ask me any questions you may have in the comments. As always, I'm happy to help you guys. I apologize for the delay with the videos. Real life has gotten very, very busy at work. Um, but luckily I actually will have more time when I get to school to record this year because I will be living in my own room so I won't be based around other people's schedules. So I only have about four weeks left of my internship until I am free. So thank you guys for bearing with me and uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. We should be able to have a lot of fun with this stuff in the coming episodes. And uh, I think that's going to be it for today guys. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you later. Past me, all my memories rolling vastly.